for saying anything else, let me begin by thanking all of you for being here tonight. We are in a battle. It is a spiritual battle. It is a battle between good and evil. It is a battle between Jesus Christ and Satan. We heard in the second reading that the world doesn't recognize us because it doesn't recognize the sun. But unfortunately, there is a whole group of people who recognize the sun very, very well. And they have rejected him. And they hate him. He is the one who told us, if they hate you, it's because they hated me first. So when the world recognizes him, it does recognize us. It hates him, and it hates us. That's a blessing for us. Not a fun one, but a blessing. Because it is going to require that we are going to have to make a stand. It's easy to sit back and give lip service to the Lord. It's easy to just kind of go along and get along. It's the American way to compromise and find a middle ground. But St. Paul is the one who asked the question most pointedly, what do Christ and Belial have in common? What do light and darkness have in common? Nothing. There is no in-between. There is no compromise. And the fact that you are here tonight precisely praying to be able to make reparation for the crimes that are happening this night against the Blessed Sacrament lays out very clearly the distinction. And that is why I am so grateful for your presence here tonight, to be able to love our Lord, to make reparation for those who this night will desecrate our blessed Lord in the Holy Eucharist in every sick, disgusting, and imaginable way that they can do it. Because they think that the fact that he is present in such a passive manner in the Blessed Sacrament means that somehow they are stronger than he is. Because they would reason that if Satan were somehow or another able to make himself in the form of a piece of bread, if someone tried to do any of these blasphemous things that they are going to do tonight, that Satan would rise up and crush them. And since Jesus doesn't do that, Therefore, they reason, you see, we're more powerful than he is. But you have to recognize that prior to their completely demented way of thinking, there is something that has to happen first. They believe in Jesus Christ. They believe in the Holy Mass. They believe in the consecration. They believe 100% without the smallest inkling of a doubt that bread and wine turn into the person of Jesus Christ. The very thing that we cannot get Catholics to believe, the Satanists do. They don't doubt it for a second. They hate him. They reject him, but they know who he is, and they know where he is. And tragically, this night, there is some unfortunate apostate priest who is going to say Mass for these unfortunate souls so that they can desecrate the Holy Eucharist. So your faith that this truly is Jesus and that you love him, 
that you do not reject his words when he told us that he is truly present in the Eucharist, that we must eat his flesh and drink his blood if we want life within us, that when he spoke, it came to be. Everything in creation, according to the psalmist, came to be because God spoke. Just as Jesus simply said to the man whose hand was shriveled, reach out your hand, he spoke and it was healed. The man who came to ask Jesus to come and heal his servant, Jesus spoke and the servant was healed. Jesus is the one who spoke and said, this is my body. This is my blood. Those are the words of Almighty God. There is no doubt of what happens when those words are spoken. But because we cannot see, because we cannot feel, then we doubt. There is no doubt when we know who Jesus is. He is God. He spoke, and it came to be. But now as we look at what is going on, as I alluded to, the sides are being drawn rather clearly. There is a whole group of unfortunate souls who this night in the Twin Cities will be getting together, and they will be having Mass and they will be desecrating the Holy Eucharist. Thanks be to God that there is a whole group of faithful souls who have gathered together. We will have Mass, and we will adore our blessed Lord. And so as we see these sides being drawn, we must also then recognize what we heard in the first reading. When the angel is told, before you do anything, wait, we have to mark the foreheads of the servants of our God. If you go back to the book of the prophet Ezekiel, you're going to find something very, very similar to that. There was a mark that was put on the foreheads of those who were faithful to the Lord. And that mark had to be put on before the angels destroyed everything. There was no in-between. You were either marked or you weren't. The mark, interestingly, the Hebrew word for mark is tau. When they translated the Hebrew into Greek, they decided for whatever reason, the rabbis did, not to translate the word, but to transliterate it. In other words, instead of using the Greek word for mark, they just simply translated or transliterated it, so it said tau. Well, there is a Greek letter that is called tau and it looks like a T in English. In other words, it looks like a cross. Do not destroy anything until we put a cross on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Now, when you go back to look at what happened at the time of Ezekiel, It's a pretty brutal scene. God told the angels to put the bodies of the dead into the temple. That would desecrate the temple because the bodies of a dead person for Jewish law is unclean. Why would you put that in the temple? Because it said right before that, 
the Spirit of God left the temple. It no longer was the holy place because the Spirit of God was gone. It was in this church back several years ago that Father Eckert brought that point up when right in St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, they brought in a pagan idol, the Pachamama, and worshiped the satanic, blasted, pagan idol in the temple of the living God. The Spirit of God left the temple. Now it's just a matter of time before we see the same thing play out. It is right there in Ezekiel. It's what's going to happen at the end of the world, as we just heard. This, I believe, is the end of an era, and we're going to see something very similar happen. So now the question you and I have to ask ourselves is, am I going to be sealed with the mark of God, with the cross of Jesus Christ? Again, there will be no in-between. I keep telling people that. You have to make a choice. Every one of us has to make a choice. It is either for or against the Lord. Anyone who's in between has decided against him. So we're either for him or we're not. If we want to play the Minnesota lukewarm game, we've chosen against him. It's hot or cold. It's evil or it's good. It's Jesus or it's Satan. But you must recognize that you have already been marked. On the day that you were baptized, the priest marked you with sacred chrism on your forehead in the shape of a cross. On the day that you were confirmed, the bishop marked you on the forehead with sacred chrism in the form of a cross. In other words, God has already chosen you. And Jesus told us when he mentioned that what it was about. He said, you didn't choose me, I chose you to go forth and bear great fruit. That means now that we have to choose him. He's already chosen us. But unless we choose him, there will be no mark on our forehead. So we have to make the choice. The fact that you're here tonight is a pretty good indication of the choice you're making. Once again, thanks be to God. But now we have to go forth with that. Because St. John told us that we are children of God. It means we're members of Jesus Christ. We can't hide that. Jesus told us that. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. A lamp that is lighted in the darkness cannot be hidden. We can't hide it. We have to stand for the Lord. And if we're going to, we might be persecuted. But our Lord told us about that too. We heard it in the gospel. Blessed are you when when you're persecuted. Blessed are you, he said, when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Do we truly love our Lord? Are we willing with our whole heart and soul to serve our Lord? That's the question each one of us has to ask. Lip service isn't going to get anyone anywhere. Again, it's a choice. And it is a choice between good and evil. 
And that's where the world is at right now. We are literally at the precipice. And it's not going to be long before we see everything break loose. So we need to choose carefully and wisely, but absolutely, because it's one or the other. And that choice needs to be made just as it was tonight, on our knees in front of the Lord. If we can honestly, truly say, I believe. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he is God. I believe that he spoke and it came to be and therefore bread and wine are changed into the very person of Jesus Christ and he is truly present among us. He is the all-powerful God and he is demonstrating his power by appearing to be weak because he is there passively to receive our love. But when you receive him, all of the power of God is within you to go out, to do whatever it is that he's going to ask you to do. It is a great time. It's not going to be a fun time, but it is absolutely the best time in the history of the world to be alive if you want to be a saint. If you want to go to heaven, there is no time ever that has been better than this one. So we need to see it as a blessing. And when everything erupts, don't panic. And if they try to cause more division, which is what they're trying to do, because they want, they want us to fight with one another. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Don't take up arms and go out in the street. It's not going to help anything. Pray. That's what's going to solve everything. Trust. Again, the power of God is right there. We just need to trust. These unfortunate souls out there tonight, in all of their revelry, all of their blasphemy, they think that they have power over God. But they don't understand. When you read Scripture, the day of the Lord is upon us. The day of the Lord is a very technical term in Scripture. You might want to look it up. That means the day that God intervenes in creation to be able to do whatever it is he's going to do. That day is nearing very quickly. So no matter what happens, just stay faithful to Jesus because you know who he is. And all we can do is say with St. Peter, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. There is nowhere else to go. Where are you going to turn? It is the Lord and only the Lord. And that's the question that every one of us and every person on the face of this earth is going to have to answer. Thanks be to God, we already know the answer. Now we just need to remain faithful to it. But that's where we're headed. And that's why it is such a blessing that you are here tonight. To be able to say yes to Jesus. To be able to make reparation for the crimes against our God. And the reparation is to love him and to serve him. So praise the Lord, what a gift. And thank you again for your love, for your faith, for coming to be with Jesus and to be able to receive his love and his power into yourself. <laughs>